Ладно, транскрибирую Тельгин. Тельгин включит какие-то твои два. Это не стандартные. Это было LY. Нет, ну вот это вот это хорошо. Нет, не знаешь, это как бы Some uh, proposals were introduced uh, into the agenda or whatever. That today from the hotel, uh, we, we, they, they will provide buses to go to the hotel. Uh, while well, we could have uh, done it by, by, by feet, so because the weather was far from being nice, from the final part of that, on the top of that, there are some red, um, aged people among our participants. So the decision was made to organize a trans bus transfer to the hotel from Helsinki very much. But at the same time, we think that it is, a, to, to, in some extent, uh, uh, in contrary to the ideas of the nature conservation. That's why, after after the conference, we will talk about uh, this proposal of uh, this uh, Professor Amarov from Kazakhstan and next time we will introduce more rational, more reasonable proposals about the transportation. My uh, presentation will have some assessment accent. That's why I have a proposal for the uh, time limits. And to first to give all the participants not more than five, five minutes Unfortunately, I don't have the bell or any signal, but I will knock in at the, against the table. So the first presentation to the examiner. So the floor goes to Professor Piman from the United States. Cultural response to the, to the climate change. To climate change. You have the floor, Professor. Thank you. Спасибо большое, Коль. Коль. Uh, we also have an important field of anthropology of policy. Uh, 
как они оценятся, это очень важная вещь. Частично мы об этом утром говорили. Как мы можем передать то, что мы думаем, чтобы это стало известно всем людям? Как они получают эти сведения? И вот это по reception theory, теория понимания, как люди понимают те или иные сведения, она вносит большой вклад в понимание. И в последнюю очередь мы вносим свой вклад в прикладную антропологию, Попытки понять, когда компенсация необходима, необходима каждому отдельности и скажем, некоторым сообществам, в отношении того, что это проблема с смягчением эффектов. Это означает прошивалтику и смягчение. Это очень медленный процесс, как мы сегодня уже слышали. А может быть, сто лет, сто лет потребуется на то, чтобы а, начать сопротивляться этому проблему. А изменение политики это тоже очень сложный вопрос, потому что здесь присутствуют огромные интересы, а те компании, которые требуются. столица Мальдивских островов. Вся страна построена на островах. Это премьер-министр Мальдивов, который подписывает договор под водой. Он драмат... Тем самым он драматизирует тот момент, что его страна очень страдает. И вот мет... 
мифология еще одна проблема, потому что у людей есть огромное количество мифов, которые оправдывают любые... Это на Новой Глинее был район Озерный край, который... И следующий слайд говорит нам о том, что мы... One is that we have to adapt or we die. <laughs> and so human beings are really uh, stuck with this. And we, as scientists and people who actually can do the research, we need to help local communities find a way to adapt in the short term. Next. There are some tentative solutions, but one of the important, the two important solutions is that we need much more research at the local level, not just at the policy level, but at the local level. And the community leaders need to uh, need to be involved with this, something that the United Nations has talked about, but it hasn't been implemented. And finally, we need multidisciplinary research teams in order to carry out our work. Uh, not just anthropologists, but anthropologists, climate scientists, econ economists, and others who will work at the local level to help these local communities. Thank you very much. <laughs> Значит, я тут э, как бы оказываюсь немножко в, в качестве белой вороны, э, потому что представляю гуманитарную линию, которая на данном обсуждении почти отсутствует. Но, есть, но проблемы, которые от, из этой э, позиции видны, могут отло серьезно отложить э, реализуемость проекта, который здесь обсуждается. Значит, дело в том, что э, наряду с экологическими проблемами э, сейчас э, не меньшую, а может быть и большую остроту, и во всяком случае это всем видно, э, приобретают э, проблемы э, сосуществования разных культур. Э, особенно остро это э, чувствуется в Европе. И э, здесь... Как мы имеем дело скорее с процессом глобальной урбанизации, где развитые страны выступают в функции города, а более слаборазвитые в функции деревни. Причем при современных средствах информационной, коммуникационной так сказать, и всякой прочей доступности, вот локальные цивилизации друг от друга э, никак не могут изолироваться, и это вызывает проблемы, решения которых, ну, во всяком случае, для Европы совершенно пока еще непонятно. В этом плане я продолжаю вот линию, которую Юрий Владимирович Яковец здесь высказал, что 21 век — это век цивилизации, то есть о чем и Хантингтон говорил. И... Это 
agreement to consensus about uh, about this and it resembles religious wars of this 16th century after blood splitting you know the period when it was announced when the address of John Shoukwar to about creation of the unified code uh, code of conduct conduct in Europe in the 16th century it was the same the religious items were moved into private sphere and the public sphere were regulated by the unified law and uh, on top of it there was um, national uh, consolidation uh, of which is not similar to what we are seeing here next slide please in this respect the situation as i see it should be res uh, referred to as multi layer so the upper rectangular is the layer of developing globalized society, which is more and more influential in different areas, but it's quite a narrow strata. Beneath it, there are strata of local civilizations and everything else needed to analyze, uh, you know, to analyze today's situation. These five levels have to be identified, which are presented here. There is one more civilization issue, which is almost not identified. Society might be individualized and collective. In a collective society, the life of individual is worth nothing. Therefore, Western societies, modern Western societies, including the globalist society, where everything is individualized, they are institutionally disarmed for the conflict uh, against uh, with uh, such societies therefore a very complicated situation arises here the multicultural multiculturalism which proclaims the value of uh, multiculturalism Europe created for the West for the societies that have accepted the Western values. In, the, in 2000, another type of multiculturalism appears related to uh, migration of uh, people from Islamic world to Europe. So the rectangular shows collectivized part of the society while uh, circles individualized. Therefore, in the Western countries, we see the situation where individualized part, which can be in included into Western society, and these are multicultural problems of. Те страны и цивилизации, я сейчас говорю, те страны и цивилизации, в которых было, и в результате возникает вот два типа мультикультурности на Западе и два типа мультикультурности на Незападе, про которые я сказать не могу, но в статье они есть. Значит, важный момент, что тезис диалога цивилизации, диалог возможен между индивидами, между индивидуализированными и а, в случае коллективизированных, а, так сказать, сообществ, Вопрос о том, возможен ли там и диалог, если там субъект для диалога, это, так сказать, вопрос, так сказать, отдельный, его а, надо, а, с ним надо разбираться. Ну, вот, собственно говоря, в это время все, что я хотел сказать. Спасибо. Спасибо. Так, пожалуйста, профессор Арсей. что я, когда готовилась к сегодняшнему выступлению, я посчитала, что лучше для сегодняшнего Конгресса будет тема «Демографическое старение» как глобальный цивилизационный вызов, поскольку именно эта проблема обсуждается как одна из очень 
существенных в столетнем плане. Я думаю, что именно на эту тему очень важно сегодня поговорить. Следующий слайд, пожалуйста. Everything we talk about today, co-evolution, nosferic civilization, is related to what population shall we have? Will it be there? And uh, what will be the composition of this population? We all know the general situation that the its uh, population is aging. Here is the forecast up to year 3000 which said that the structure of the population will definitely of the world will change and definitely the pop structure of the population of individual countries line three and four or line three and line four indicate that people of ages 60 plus by 2050 more than twice as much as now and people who are 80 plus more than twice as much as now which is very essential it's very important because how the world will cope with aging population. In our centennial plan, the challenges of aging are described as just negative situation. At the same time, it's a problem that should be treated in a different way. We can talk about aging in two aspects and about the reasons for aging. The first is quite clear. The birth rate is declining and up to the year 2050 and 2100 it will decline despite the general growth of population on the other hand the entire world and the population of the world have a trend to increase longevity on one hand it's a challenge on the other hand it's a very positive factor but here are here is the inequality between countries and regions. I believe that in our centennial plan we should, talk, when talking about demographic systems, pay attention not only at the general trend, but also at the trend we have in different countries and territories. Let's say 81 years or 76 years will be average lifespan by the middle of the century. Currently in the world it's 68, but see the difference in lifespan between different countries. Japan today in 2013 it's 83, while Sierra Leone has 44. And this situation, this gap remains for the next 87 years, which carries tremendous challenges. We may lose multicultural, multicultural ethnic component of the world. Why? Because the last line on this slide shows that we have countries and there will be till 20, uh, 2100 which decrease the number of population. I will not uh, dwell uh, due to time shortages because of uh, time, time reasons. The most depopulated country is Bulgaria, which is lose one third. Russia is also in the same list. When we're talking about a centennial plan, one family, two children, we have to talk about different countries. For the countries which are in the mode of depopulation, probably one, three children per family should be right. Next slide, please. The next, the last one. We have discussed our problems about many times. This slide showed the documents for global forecast up to 2050, with it, including uh, Rimashevska and my paper de dedicated to social dynamics. I believe we should talk about aging, not from the point of view of old age, that will be young old and old old and the ones we see here they are not old they are wise adults if there will be more of those we'll be able to preserve our planet green prosper prospering and safe thank you the floor goes to 
Stenberg. Uh, division uh, of the Institute of Biomedical Problems of the Russian Academy of Sciences, Psychological Environment of Russia's Population in the Condition of Social Stress in the Context of Global Trends. I believe I have seven minutes. Next slide, please. Well, I will not discuss global issues. I will talk about Russian issues. As a result of shock therapy, reforms, and so on, the Russian society is under severe social stress. This slide are uh, manifestation of this stress. Professor Alexandrovsky has introduced the term of social stress. Again, the background of well-known post-traumatic stress uh, maladies together with social stresses. It's just uh, explosive mixture. Main social criteria, a number of suicides, alcoholization and drug abuse levels. I will talk about mainly about suicide. WHO divides all countries into three groups by the number of suicides, uh, low, medium and high. Russia is uh, for a long time already in the third group with high level. This is the place of Russia among other countries. In different years it's between first and third place, currently third, but it's quite unstable. This is a suicidal map of the world where Russia is painted red, which is quite high level of suicide. This is a distribution of suicides throughout Russian regions, so it's mostly European North and Far East. This is a very interesting picture which shows that uh, society always reacts by increasing aggressive behavior towards social stress. This aggressive behavior may be directed outside the homicide curve or might be directed uh, inside as uh, autoaggression, that is suicide. They go par the curves go parallel, and the turn turning points of the curves match our social uh, unrest periods. So the lowest is uh, the so-called stagnation years, then perestroika with some hopes for better future, and anti-alcoholic uh, campaign then the peak of the shock therapy, then a relative stabilization, when it was dollar was six rubles, then default and decrease in, uh, con in conditions of relative stabilization or stagnation of today. The age dynamics of suicides is different from the world. Mostly uh, men of productive age are committing suicide. This is the same on, on at the world level. You see the peak here. And next is uh, adolescent suicide. So is the analysis of the reasons for the situation. Next, uh, the reasons, social background, quite a gloomy picture. What should be done? Here, the only way out is to radically change social policy and some recommendations which we could suggest, but due to the lack of time, that's all I wanted to say today.
next is Professor Pascaletti, Social Barriers to Renewable Energy. Is he here? No. Professor Gakuru from Kenya. I'll spend my few minutes uh, sharing with you some of the reflections concerning the subject of this conference, Congress, uh, which are in making. Uh, one, I do note that uh, we need to continue thinking uh, very systematically about social life and uh, sustainable development in a global society in a global society and more appropriately global civilization and uh, thinking about social life all theoretical perspectives come to our attention some very sophisticated some very simple some outdated some most contemporary who is the best thinker in the modern world to give us a final solution on what kind of social life should human beings uh, enjoy? I don't think that uh, if we have that kind of intellectual, this conference would have been necessary. It's necessary because we don't have a one comprehensive holistic answer. However, it is important for me just to make the following few observations, particularly coming from the South, uh, as uh, normally seen. If you come from Africa and Kenya, you are seen to come from the South. And uh, I still have a problem with modern geography and even how the globe and the map makers, cartographers, have configured the world today. Even the way where North and South is, all that might need to be questioned if we are going to think about the next civilization. Because the current civilization is based on some very uh, clear assumptions out of science and technology. Um, my point, observation, point and observations are three. And the one is that uh, the concept of the global civilization presents to me uh, a very useful point of, point of reference uh, in thinking about how we need to continue living together now that through advances in science technology and other interests, we are all uh, at close distance. We are no longer uh, far apart. That presents unprecedented uh, challenges for all of us, at the personal level, emotionally, socially, plus other esoteric and grandiose ideas about uh, everything else you know here. Um, so, however, the thinkers behind the globe, the OPGC, I really would like to uh, recognize the importance about this concept, and those who have been thinking about it, professors, yeah, uh, because they have realized and recognized the necessity of all human beings or humankind, the necessity, and I would like you to underscore the concept of necessity, is no longer a matter of wish or feeling, it is, you know, logical necessity uh, that we have to come together once uh, 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 in a way that it has not happened in the past. Because even those who are never part of history are now in history. Those who are never part of history are now right there uh, demanding a recognition uh, to contribute in making history and building a civilization for humankind. 
I am therefore going to only note in addition that for such a civilization to take root, I think we have to go back to the drawing board and begin to think about how inclusive the world can be. At the moment, it's not inclusive. Clearly, we know that. There is no mutual respect. We know that between the cultures, between civil civilizations, which are there today. In fact, those of us from Africa are even seeing ourselves as being seen as beginning to build a civilization. And it's not even clear what direction the African civilization, as it joins the global civilization, the shape and the direction is going to take. However, um, and taking into consideration the new enormous challenges, the enormous challenges that we face today, starting from the era of colonization and decolonization, going through the Second World War, the post cold War, I mean, all that is so recent and yet so important sociologically to help us begin to think uh, fearlessly, objectively, and uh, um, uh, and, uh, and in a manner that we can embrace each other. I have one conviction, however, uh, that the human genius, the human genius, which does not belong to any one particular population, it belongs to the human species. The human genius, guided by progressive, uh, loving, um, you know, feelings of mutual respect, we can overcome the many challenges that face us today in the 21st century. Some of these very many challenges uh, that we cannot ignore at the moment is hunger. Hunger. A third of, uh, about half of the world today live in poverty. Live in poverty. How can we overcome poverty? Uh, of majority of the people in the world today. A civilization cannot coexist with starving, hungry people. I don't think so. However, we define a civilization. And uh, therefore, uh, finally, uh, human kind, we uh, must, uh, using our you know, innovative uh, spirit, we must be able to establish alternative ways of coexistence, alternative ways of utilizing resources, both physical and human, in order to uh, be able to uh, you know, enjoy a better life, as uh, might be envisaged. And we can harness all this together through mutual, mutual respect and uh, uh, and, 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 and support. The logic of OPGC and the thinking behind this uh, can, should be supported by all uh, thinking, positive thinking uh, individuals, scholars, policy makers, politicians, scientists, those who think progressively should join in this struggle. Those who are against human progress should take a holiday and leave the rest of us to continue. Thank you very much. The floor goes to Krusinets, Evgeny Krusinets. It's uh, international labor migration and its region uh, regulation issues is his point is the topic of his presentation. Коллеги, вот, дамы и господа, тема моего выступления международной трудовой миграции, проблемы регулирования про например, России. Выбор этой темы не случайен. Эта тема очень активно обсуждается в нашем обществе. Международная трудовая миграция это мировой феномен. И ежегодно десятки миллионов людей пересекают государственные границы в поисках работы. Только за период нулевых годов масштабы международной трудовой миграции возросли на треть. И сейчас около 100 миллионов человек считаются трудовыми мигрантами в мире. В России... 
cardinal changes in the uh, flows of migrants uh, initiated the changes in the migration policies. I refuse to, I decline the presentation. I will just dwell on four issues which in my point are really closely connected with each other. The situation in the labor market, uh, the labor migration, thirdly, concerns the illegal migration, and finally, the policy which is uh, a practice in this country, in this sphere. First, the labor migration is uh, closely linked to the labor markets. In the situation in this country, is is very similar to the rest of the world, imbalanced development paid with unemployment. There are a, a lot of vacant jobs, and this is the requirement or demand in the uh, supplementary benefits. So this demand um, increases the official labor will is employment. Uh, the career mobility of the population is very low in this country, and besides, it is in the situation of the demographic uh, demographic crisis. The depletion of the population, 300,000 people per year, it requires a lot of labor migration. The factor of uh, development is balanced the labor market. Second, my second thesis is related to trends that are similar to the rest of the world. Uh, so the scale of involvement on the attraction but there are some structural changes, some structural shifts. After the financial crisis, the year 2008, 2009, it is um, uh, is being leveled, and the number of working on the contract basis is reducing, and the number of those working on the patent basis is growing. The number of migrants which come to from Central Asia. Um, there they have the different level of development, bad knowledge of Russian, and they are majority of them are non-qualified uh, persons. Labor migration is accompanied with a bunch of problems which are tensely related to illegal migration. This notion, this concept is not uh, determined legally. It is assessed from 300 to 1,000 to 3 million people, uh, which is, um, can be explained by the fact that there is no legal notion. One group is when migrants enter Russia illegal, illegally, their, their stay here is legal, but their working is illegal. Second group is uh, working illegally. Third model is they illegally enter the country illegally uh, stay here or legally work. And the fourth mode is when all these status are illegal. In this country, uh, our country performed the active migration policy. We have adopted the concept of the development of legal migration, very important solutions or decisions were taken, the migration program. But there are very important problems on the The, exist, the existing mechanism doesn't take into consideration the real demand for attracting uh, foreign uh, labor force. The usage is inefficient. Uh, we still couldn't increase the uh, attracting the qualified migration and to de reduce the illegal migration. Uh, a lot of measures has been have been taken to improve this situation in order to create, uh, to, to attract highly qualified personnel and to introduce barriers on the, uh, which will keep the illegal migrants in place. The main ideas are the following. It, to, uh, uh, not to, to take the qualified personnel out of the quota policies, to create the bank of the labor force and the, the preferential features. They have to 
uh, on the legal basis, on the beneficial basis, they can get visas on the legal basis and to create such a situation when the uh, organization is not, is not beneficial for them to attract not qualified person. And finally, which I wanted to focus on that, some decisions in this area, but the situation is uh, very low, is very controversial. The important shift would be is to assess the number of registered migration and the uh, complex um, tests and to uh, get uh, trustworthy information about this problem. This is what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. The floor goes to Tatiana Yakovets from the Russian Academy of Sciences, Demographic, Demographic Issues of Global Sustainable Development. The floor is yours. Due to limited time, I will not show the slides. I will just read them. My presentation is quite controversial in relation to the documents we are adopting today because the main factor of uh, the planet Earth is the humankind and the goal of sustainable development is to create a better environment for the population but however the aggressive part of uh, humankind assumes exclusive rights for comfort and earth resources and the right to uh, rule the uh, other nations therefore we uh, see the struggle of these two views in the centennial plan. There, there is a third point of view, the creation of world government, uh, regulating world development in the interest of the entire humankind, uh, which is organized in a network uh, principle as interaction of uh, large uh, segments of civilization. Inside the civilization, the ethnos are interacting, so the attempts to uh, change the structure of values which on the surface is manifesting itself as this uh, Dalek civilization and substituted with the world government seems to be inefficient and what is offered in the Centennial Plan may be a regulated of the life of the Earth and may be of consultative value. Uh, the humankind goes through different value phases as Bert Kapitz has said uh, the modern phase we have a demographic transition uh, related to the beginning of the third wave of global dynamics, therefore the characteristics of human of uh, human race are being changed. Um, now we have transitioned from uh, quantitative growth to qualitative growth, both in uh, life quality and the population itself. However, the resources are limited. Therefore, the current uh, consumption of the golden billion countries may not be the standard for international. They do not want to uh, reject their comfort in uh, favor of more ascetic uh, way uh, of life. Therefore, they aggressively struggle for the resources for their comfort, which manifests itself in the creation of uh, international corporations, uh, which are trying to supplant the world government. The center of tra uh, global corporations are in the center of uh, golden billion. Other countries like Africa find themselves in the conditions where the uncontrolled growth of population leads to uh, death of the population from disease and uh, hunger. Uh, in the golden billion countries, uh, there is a transition from the normal uh, need to have children to consumerism. The depopulation has uh, its natural uh, reasons. The increased uh, complexity of uh, economic processes requires more and more time to train highly qualified specialists. Therefore, each child requires more attention, more money for his tr training. Uh, the environment is uh, polluted. This leads to children's disease, so to keep children healthy it requires more and more money, which means that without state support the family is unable to reproduce uh, 
same number of uh, society members and during the second wave the growth of the population is decreasing uh, the simult with a simultaneous increase of quality of each member of society. However, in developed countries there is a decay of the moral level of uh, population. With a social democratic policy on, on the part of nation states, uh, the reproduction of population is possible. This same trend is manifested by the long-term forecast of the United Nations. We believe that each uh, ethnic group in each development tries to reach self-realization. This realization depends on the values that uh, the members of this ethnic, uh, ethnic group possess. So the civilization is developing toward the maximum self-realization in the conditions it uh, currently finds itself for the humankind at the un as, 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 as a whole. The indicator of success is the dynamics of uh, individual essences and civilization. So for the increase of the living standard is just one of the indicators, but the spiritual aspect is no less important. Therefore, uh, Peter Sarokin defines the supremacy of uh, the periods of uh, material value supremacy and spiritual value supremacy when the attention is paid to spiritual growth. However, he believes that the ideal is the third uh, system which uh, pays important role to both spiritual and um, material growth. The 20th was the growth of uh, the material values. Uh, the, it was believed that the economics has to provide maximum growth of living standard, why demographics should uh, provide conditions for economic growth. Uh, therefore, we omitted the de moral degradation of Western civilization uh, in, uh, alongside with the growth of material well-being. The center of uh, civilization is m uh, shifting uh, eastwards, well, because the East has kept its spiritual values. The aging of population is due to decrease of uh, birth, decreased birth rate, increasing of senior citizens, so demographic transition is uh, all over, which should definitely reflect at the production mode of the population of the Earth by the middle of the 21st century. We should expect serious changes on the uh, map of the population. Therefore, the refusal of state regulation suggested in the Centennial Plan and transitioning the shift of such regulation to world government seems to us inefficient. Uh, we can agree with uh, Geckel's opinion about the role of state in the life of society. Each ethnos and super ethnos has a right to decide uh, the reproduction mode which is most favorable for its self-realization. We should keep the multiculturalism of ethnic groups on the earth without uh, making unified standards. However, on the way toward the solution of the global problem, each state has to solve its own problems by itself. The floor goes. To Nelly Markova. Civilization population and resources. I'm Natalia. Civilization, population and resources. This is the title of my presentation. Natalia Mikhailovna had some questions. I believe all of those present in this room have these questions. I also have them. My short presentation will be related to these questions to some extent. So, an outstanding Russian sociologist from Kovalevsky related civilization changes with the to the population growth getting this concept what civilizations are we talking about 
you probably know that there are several definitions of the term civilization. We are probably talking about local civilizations, but different scientists count different number of such civilizations. Toynbee speaks about 37 civilizations. Oswald Spengler counted 7. Danilevsky 15. At this forum we are talking about the global civilization. The, uh, united civilization. How shall we match all these 37, 7, or 15 and blend them in one global? Because each of these civilizations has its own socio-cultural complex, its own natural resources, landscape, historic conditions of its existence, inventions, etc. So each civilization has tremendous uh, cultural, socio-economic luggage. The history of mankind is the history of changes of the conditions of human life uh, resulted from um, adapt adaptation of a human being towards nature and adapt adapting nature toward the needs of the human being. Here the main leading role in the growth of population and the formation of civilization was played by inventions. Now we call them technologies. Our scientist Gladiev has developed uh, the theory of technological modes. Now we're talking about the six technological mode. Therefore, we are able probably at this base to unite these 37, 7 or 15 civilizations on the technological base, on the base of invention. Another issue. Titles of uh, books about the Western civilizations sound pessimistic. Look, Oswald Spengler, the decay uh, uh, of Europe, Toynbee, civilization at the history court, Peter M. Sarok in the crisis of our time. Why Western civilization is viewed so pessimistically? Where is the crisis of the Western civilization? It's a well-known quote of Peter M. Sarokin that we are living at the end of a bright, sensual day of the Western civilization. Let's see what happens with the population density in the West. England, 20, 240 people per square kilometer. Germany, 230. Holland, 375. It's quite high density of population. If we'll compare it to Chinese civilization, we thought it's overpopulated, but the density there is 131, which means that in the Western civilization we have twice as high people, uh, a number of people living per, uh, per, per square kilometer. And now let's look at our civilization. We are standing alone in the role of civilization because we have very low population density. Ten years ago it was 8.6, now it's probably 8.4. After all these uh, losses, which happened with our country uh, for the last quarter of a century. Therefore, we should develop our own approach towards global civilization, keeping in mind our vast resources and very low population density. And based on the needs of this interest of the state, we should build our portal of entry towards modern, uh, towards uh, universal civilization. The global civilization should be technology-based, built on the uh, joint uh, 
resource of technologies. This is it. Okay. The next is Ecology of Culture of the East. Authors are Lapina and Shilin. Are they here? Yeah. We can. You have double time. Dear colleagues, we, on behalf of the uh, group of several, oh, several <laughs> group of several people, we represent the interest of uh, all mankind. We take the liberty to be this not so modest because we have been dealing uh, for more than 40 years um, with these problems and we were looked into the depths of this problem and we're working in the different concept then which is applied here and today in this uh, according to this concept the point is that uh, both in the west and in russian federation so the, the civilizations are being criticized, uh, shortly speaking, the global civilization in particular, it's a global tomb, it's a global grave, because it's uh, built on the, technolog on the technological foundation, and technologies are the most important weapon of combating the nature. The aliens, the ancient Greeks started it, from the Aristotle contributed to it. He uh, made a great contribution for his, um, for Greece. One three million uh, Greece went uh, against uh, Persia, and Alexander Macedonsky, the disciple of um, Aristotle, combated combat the Persian Persian military units because Aristotle created a new type of a, of a person. It was courageous, it was brazen, it was the bandito and the, and the cr criminal and the killer. They introduced, uh, they saved their Greece culture. It is the army of uh, killers who turned all the mankind against the nature. This, tr this trend is still in place and we say no more. It's enough, we have enough creative, um, creative energy and the consciousness to turn mankind to live in harmony with nature. This harmony is inbuilt in the, in the, in the oriental science, in the oriental civilizations. We are a specialist, oriental specialist, but we are talking about the oriental culture, not because we are patriots of our profession, but because we see uh, deeper than Western authors who cross out the um, Oriental practices, who treat them, uh, who treat the East as being outdated, retired, and uh, but but uh, East is the enlightened barbarity. It's Eastern civilizations. It's the destiny of killing of nature because the civilization, the Western civilization, is built on the principle of convey, converting the consu consuming into consumerism. And this imbalance is becoming more and more irrational, more and more dangerous, and the mankind will end. It will bring the end to the mankind using our brain uh, oriented, wrongly oriented. So the essence of our presentation, so our encyclopedia of live knowledge, uh, says that our pain is that we can change our mentality, but the, the only reason, the only drive, the engine for this is understanding that it is possible, and creative person is always changing itself. I mentioned this, um, already mentioned this law of uh, self-denial of you of, the, of, the, of yesterday. Uh, when a creative person is uh, developing its uh, creative um, abilities, then it denies it for in the name of the new and innovative achievements. Goethe used to say that only those are the 
uh, have a right for life and freedom, who is uh, prepared to fight for it every day. He used to be self-critical. This uh, ability to be self-critical is in, uh, in built into the mentality of the best uh, cultural figures of the both uh, East and West. Now the, the, one of the chapters in our encyclopedia is called The Genius of the Future. Uh, we collected, gathered all them around one big table and we talked, uh, it was a visionary, imaginary uh, talk to each of them. I the Virgin Mary, I am Christ, uh, the Christ, I am Buddha. Uh, we asked them why, uh, what shall we do? Every um, achievement uh, had its restrictions. Having love to Confucius, we have to achieve the post-Confucian uh, level. I was uh, studying Marx, uh, thinking Marx, teaching all my life. But I think we have to overcome Marx and go further, to go beyond ourselves. The mankind is on the threshold of uh, going beside uh, uh, you. I'm begging you, deny the idea of civilization. Eight years ago, we were disputing this in India, on the Indian Forum, and I used to tell you, civilization is a frozen lice. It's uh, trying to combine what cannot be combined. It's very dangerous, both for the mankind and for nature. There are cultures of uh, higher level, built on ha harmony, but not on the contradiction, not on the conquering of nature. For the West, starting from ancient Greeks, life is, uh, is fight against nature, against other tribes. But in the East, the culture is built on ha harmony, harmony between, between human beings and harmony of humankind with nature. Uh, human beings, human civilization can be a creator or in Russian tradition, in the um, God-man. Uh, it's a gift to you, one copy of our book. Uh, we can, yes, we have some personal dispute, but we have to deliver, give birth to a new generation of mankind, which will be able to save the planet. We are right at the threshold, the full crisis. Uh, the nature will not bend another century of such as we can save it, we can turn it, to the, but we shouldn't appeal to the authorities, but to creative intelligence uh, which are capable of change and to self, um, to improve themselves for the enjoyable, for their joy and for the mankind and ecology is harmonious combination of, of uh, Mankind and nature. Marx, the genius, uh, is nobody. Is known almost to nobody in the world. Marx, in the end of his life, uh, delivered a, a wonderful idea that labor is uh, is an enjoyable life. It is starting from there. We can, uh, we're try, trying to create a new land, a new culture, a new human being, new ethics and new consciousness. It is possible. As Marx used to, he used the category of uh, product to create the capital theory, but they, it was, uh, Marx meant uh, the denial of capital, wise denial of capital from Marx capital. Uh, other notions, other concepts um, stem, like life capital, social capital, human capital. It's a new idea, a new concept which can unite all mankind in one creative society, one creative community, a new world, a new level. We hope that we haven't yet lost everything. We, we still have to something to lose. Not our lives. We 
we are raging, we are going generation, we have children, we have grandchildren, we have nature, that we should, uh, each of us, be responsible for the fate of our children, for the future of our nature, for the future of the whole world. And this responsibility can turn the mankind. Let's use it. Thank you very much. So the floor goes to Dr. Tkachenko. It's a research center of the International Economic Relations in the Financial University. I'm the professor of... I wanted to show you the Demographic Encyclopedia, which was published, has been published this year. The authors are 48 scientists of Russia, Ukraine, and... Um, Kazakhstan. I've brought it here to the creator and the first uh, director of the Institute of the Population of uh, Dragova Natal Mikhailna. Uh, the big article in this book, the big entry, is Civilization. Svetoni categorized the uh, Russia as a type of Christian, uh, Christian civilization but it is different from Western civilization because it didn't uh, go through Renaissance. The example of civilizations I wanted to analyze based on three demographic indicators. Uh, life standards, uh, mortality, baby mortality, and the life expectancy, lifespan. Three theses on both of these, on all these criteria. All Western European countries, starting from 1998, uh, enjoyed the growth, growth of the um, birth rate, which was stopped by the recession, and it was de de decreasing in, in all the countries. Russia also showed growth, beginning from the year 2000, and then another, it was another drop in the year 2005, which was not different from any other. And now the, the growth continued, regardless of the recession. Uh, our government likes to quote or to say about some months or positive natural increase. All demographs know that demographic uh, indicators can be analyzed only on the, in the end of the, on the year, year on year. They just sometimes operate the quarter indicators, quarter on quarter indicator. But which we really want to talk about the positive indicator in the scissors. Uh, but for some reason or another, our authorities didn't drop a word about it. 45 years, the agricultural population and the indicator of the <coughs> total birth rate exceeded the natural started to natural two point fifteen and then no reason why you know how they all live second indicator was um, baby baby birth rate baby mortality it started improving beginning of the year 2006 regardless of the growing um, real income but still how we can what fluctuations from uh, regions to regions, or subjects to federation, regardless of everything, those who have uh, good, uh, good indicators this year may show something horrible. Next year, uh, so there are some regions who are in line with civilized and developed countries of Europe, and some of them show the indices which are, uh, can be compared to the African, most retarded African countries, and about life standards, uh, life expectancy. I'm not a uh, fan of uh, uh, to looking on all these indicators uh, jointly. They should be uh, looked at indi individually. The representatives of other countries probably don't know that Russia occupies the, uh, the first uh, position in terms of the difference in life expectancy between the sexes, 11 years, uh, according to the feminine indicator, 
was 128 and the for masculine 169 position in the rate rating world rating so the top uh, this table shows the top uh, 10 top uh, lower countries 10 lower uh, countries which are lower in this not the birth rate but indicator showing the, the life expectancy or those uh, men who lived until the age of 65 this is the latest uh, the last two lines to last very last two lines the last by one it is females who lived up to 60 and the, if you exclude Lesotho we are were worse than two African countries, uh, Zambia and Botswana, were in the um, were in line with the um, worst life uh, men's life expectancy in the world. Uh, what policy should be talked about after this? Thank you very much. Perhaps I still more some time. Can you see me from this chair? I will be talking from here. In the materials of this conference, there is a sentinel plan. It has been already mentioned here today. But I think it's a very serious, very ambitious document, very important, very imposes a lot of responsibility and demanding, uh, calling for expertise, calling for discussion, calling for um, consideration, which will be useful not only for the plan itself, but for those who are going to come up with the expert assessment. I can come up with this following example. We are talking that on average, in Russia, in the civilized, civilized, in the global civilization, they should, every family should have two children. However, this is a very rough assessment. On the other hand, it's uh, not substantiated. On the other hand, it's well known that with the framework of the global civilization, there is a wide uh, uh, variety extremely wide variety. I can even judge it by the data pertaining to Russia. We have regions in Russia differing by social demographic indicators, by the factor of 5, 7 and 10. So it's very, very large difference. Therefore, to define uh, the planning of development on one hand is very complicated on the other hand we have to understand why is it being done well I don't want to talk about Russia I want to talk about the world at large different regions of the world what why do we want to define it because it influences in a very essential way uh, which we methods we are going to use M methods and models for the forecast they depend on whom this forecast is being done therefore it seems to me that if we want to really make a, a plan and submit it to the experts it's very useful but the thing is that it's also a huge responsibility so depending on the goal whom it will be submitted to and what for what's the purpose but I think that matter there is more to it we all know 
that at the beginning of this century, of this millennia, in the year 2000, the plan has been adopted, which included eight steps. And the first one was to eradicate poverty and hunger within the next 15 years. Then, gender balance, child mortality, including infant mortality, uh, average mortality. I don't like av the term average because it's misleading. And also eight more points, eight more items. Without analyzing of what has been done towards implementation of those eight, eight goals, we all know what happens with child and infant mortality in different countries, but I would like to stress once again that there is a wide variety of uh, scenarios. So if we are talking about the global civilization, why should we do it? What for should we do it? Why do I stress this issue? Because I know that quite often this average uh, numbers, average indicators, they just are misleading. They mask the situation. It's especially dangerous for the regions and countries and continents which have uh, huge differences inside. I have to tell you that in, today in Russia you know that income grows very slow while the number of billionaires and oligarchs increases very rapidly. So by saying that that the average level is increasing, yes, if you take one billionaire who earns one billion per year and you take one million senior citizens or workers who have 10,000 rubles salary and make it average, you'll get a very interesting picture and everyone will look happy at this picture. Therefore, I mistrust average numbers, uh, taking into account the existing differences. So if we use average, we have to understand why are we doing it. In order to avoid um, making it more misleading. So the main item of this eight tasks proclaimed by the UN in the United Resolutions of all the countries. The, one of the tasks is to eradicate poverty and hunger. But in one of the greetings, I think uh, Mr. Garelli said that this problem is far from being solved. But this is not the only problem issue that is not resolved. So it's wonderful that we are making here a centennial plan. It's wonderful that we are considering dynamics of global civilization. But we have to look back. Then we'll understand what are we getting, where are we going to. So this question has been already asked. What are we building here? Not only in Russia, what is being built in different continents? Well, you know, one thing is the living standard of golden billion. The other, all the rest, the rest six or seven billion, especially if the total population will grow up to 11 billion. Therefore, I believe 
that by creating this plan we should forward it with the analysis of what has been done within the 13 years or 15 years that have already elapsed. It is very important because I believe it will steer the structures, authorities, or scientists, or other e interested parties, and inform them of what's going on in reality. Otherwise, our discussion and speculations, which we heard a lot, are leading us astray. There was a wonderful presentation from St. Petersburg dedicated to ozone. I forgot what it was entitled, but the structures which are hard to adopt, which are hard to adapt to what we have currently in the society. Definitely the development should go toward this goal, but I believe that we have to be more concrete so it would largely match the reality of today. Therefore I welcome the documents which were offered to the participants of this Congress and I believe this is a huge capital, scientific capital, intellectual capital. But I believe it's just the beginning of the way of the, the fourth Congress. So I believe that by the fifth Congress we should make a breakthrough, a huge step forward. Thank you. Um, I want to thank uh, Dr. Rumashevskaya uh, for her uh, wonderful comments and actually all of the panelists I thought were so uh, very passionate and, uh, and in emphasizing the importance of the, uh, the unity of human beings in uh, solving this problem and the importance of every sector of society. And I, I was also impressed by the, we, the fact that we were able to talk about a variety of cultures as well as a variety of age groups, which is very, also very important. Uh, that we, um, we need to understand that uh, we need to communicate intergenerationally as well as cross cultures about this problem, uh, about the problem of the environment. Um, there is a, a um, I, I was especially um, I was especially struck by some of the comments that also talked about the question of economic forces in the in solving the problem of uh, human beings and the environment and their integration in the environment. And we have to recognize that as scientists, we are frankly under attack from economic forces in the world. In uh, the United States and elsewhere, people uh, are now looking at science, at real science, as mere opinion. And this is one of the ways that they want to, they're trying to deny the results that we are presenting in such a fantastically convincing manner with, our, with the, the real research that's been done here. And it is, it's terribly discouraging. Uh, for uh, for me as a scientist to present to see a work that's presented before the public and then have politicians or people who are uh, involved with economic interests say oh well that's just your opinion it's not just our opinion 
This is real, solid, scientific fact. And it's very hard for uh, us to find a way to counter the people who have lots of economic interests and lots of money and who are not interested in hearing what we have to say because in the short term they stand to benefit. Uh, so uh, the message here is extremely positive and I am I'm inspired by the, the work that's been uh, presented here. Uh, the only problem is how do we make our voices heard in the world and that's I think one of the most important things that we must uh, take into consideration. Thank you. Igor Vladimirovich, I just want to say a few words in defense of civilization. We're talking about the same thing, but we call it different, with an effort name. The main thing in civilization is not technology. The main civilizing factor is a system of knowledge, is uh, materialized intellect. So historically, both civilization and science and noosphere have uh, originated at the same time in the course of Neolithic revolution. Civilization is the embodiment of human intellect, in its different aspects. This is what you call live knowledge. It's alive when it's implemented into something, be it spiritual values, material values, technologies, etc. Therefore, because, just because it's in demand, it is the highest, the peak. Prior to it, there was a huge process of uh, perfecting human brains. So this is the highest peak of the evolution of nature when one of the uh, biological uh, families calling called Homo got such species that were able to open uh, for huge changes and it opened uh, for such a breakthrough which was unparalleled in uh, the other categories of life nature. There are advantages and disadvantages. So on one hand we have a might of human intellect which may be turned towards be uh, better or towards good or evil. We've seen when huge, huge civilization suffered and now global civilization is threatened by the fact that if we still have this trend when human intellect will be used for creating more and more powerful means of destruction of people and of nature it will the cur current threat is that with a law a change of generation uh, scientific and uh, cultural heritage will be lost and the humankind will become wild and when we are talking in defense of transformation of civilizations we have to clearly see this alternative either we are going towards self-destruction and the return of uh, the earth to more than look of Mars or we can turn it into good and continue to develop Homo sapiens, probably will be sapiens sapiens, it will be smart enough in order to prolong the unique life in the universe at the highest peak of universe development achievements. Our session is comes to its end. Next. So we announce a break for the before the next session starts. Thank you. Thanks.